Welcome back to the Sports Max Zone as we continue our countdown to the Mute Mile Race Day scheduled for this Saturday at Kimanis Park. Today we'll zone in on the unique experience that patrons and punters are likely to experience. With the Mute Mile expected to present a majestic horse racing experience, in a minute we'll bring you up to speed with some of the stellar horse racing personalities who are expected to be in attendance. However, for our regional viewers who may be wondering what exactly is the Mute Mile, it's an event dubbed the richest horse race in the history of the Caribbean. Boasting a substantial purse of US $150,000 or 22.5 million Jamaican dollars, the event will be contested over a mile and is restricted to horses three years old and upward. Well, joining us to continue our look ahead to Saturday's massive race day is Solomon Sharp, the executive chairman of Supreme Ventures Racing and Entertainment Limited. They are the promoters of horse racing in Jamaica. It's a great day to talk to you. I love the Mute Mile. We know you love the Mute Mile. Lance is getting his clothes ready for the Mute Mile. <laughs> and the purse, lots of money. Yeah, big money. Big money on offer. Not just the purse for this race, but the, um, we have the chairman's plate. We also have the Bruce on the loose trophy. And as a treat to the participating horsemen, we topped up the purses. So the minimum purse that they're racing for on this Saturday is a million dollars. Oh, wow. That's... And we have 11 races, so do the math, you know? Yeah, it's a lot of money, Solomon. Yeah. And, you know, you have to be thankful for your sponsors. I saw, of course, for the... Um, for the launch, when yes. we did the draw, right. um, you know, you spoke about the sponsors and I think, you know, it's important that you recognize them because when we talk about money, without these partnerships, this multi mile will be impossible. Yeah, well, we have to really thank the main sponsors, the Mute family, for coming up big. Um, we had to kind of hold them back because they wanted to go a little bit more aggressive and we said, hey, you know, give us some time to grow, you know? We can't... <laughs> You don't want to go too hard too soon. Um, similar to, you don't want to go too hard too soon in this race, yes, you know? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but um, we're very happy. I think the trajectory that we're on right now, we expect it to be here on year three. Um, we did expect a foreign horse. We, th we weren't absolutely sure that we would have gotten a foreign jockey because we knew that we're on a very competitive weekend, pretty much opening weekend at Gulfstream Park. Um, Championship meet, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And um, it's the last big meet at Aqueduct. Yeah. So with the Cigar Mile and the other stakes races on, we're pretty close to landing Castellano, and he, he said that he had to work the Bradcocks, two-year-old, and he says, boy, I'm sorry, guys, this horse worked too sweet. Mm -hmm. Now, you don't give up a two-year-old ride now because that's a potential um, Derby or Oaks ride for next year, um, which we went to Louisiana for Relu Gutierrez. He has the same agent as um, Julien Peru. He wanted to come but it's the claiming crown at Louisiana down. So we're, we're competing with way bigger money in North America. Um, Leperu had a quiet weekend, so to speak, and then he's going to leave Kentucky and he's going to ride in Oakland where, with Matt Peak, who has sent out four horses to Oakland. So that meet doesn't start until the 8th. He's going to be away from his family, so he's bringing his family for a mini vacation. Mm -hmm. So we got lucky, yeah. right? Um, Shane Ellis has been hanging out with um, Daisu, Daisu Fukumoto and he's like, Shane, you know, vibes, you know, more good Jamaica. And, and then here he is and he has enjoyed it from, from being here. Um, the Fox crew came in on Monday night and Andy Serling was on a luxury yacht today and fell asleep. And he says, there's nothing greater than this. <laughs> I'm in paradise watching um, racing from New York. So he was on his phone watching races at Aqueduct. And okay, then yeah. meanwhile, the guys are in the studio, they're jealous, but they did two features today um, on us. On, um, the Aqueduct coverage, yeah. Yeah, I America's saw them, yeah. there at the racing. So 
Things are just at fever pitch and it's just fantastic. So we, we've ended up now in year two having a bigger international event. So it just makes my job a little harder. We have to up the ante next year. Yeah. But we immediately go back to the drawing board and you know, said to Naira, do we go on the following weekend and do we get our own weekend now? So we are piggybacking on the, on the cigar mile. Um, but you know, we're the star of the show because <laughs> it's, it's the cigar mile, then Mute mile closes the show and then um, we have the chairman's plate live also at 2.02. Yeah, um, you mentioned the Mute family and uh, the gratitude for them being being sponsors. They were owners of the outstanding horse, Bruce, Bruce on the Loose, Loose yes. who was a Jamaica-bred horse that went to Trinidad and Tobago and won multiple races, multiple track records and so on. So I think our Trini audience will be looking on that Bruce on the Loose race as well because there is an attachment from them um, on, on, on the horse and, and the family. Yeah, well, John O'Brien, if you're watching, I know I still have an outstanding phone call. I've just been very busy, but I'll call you right after this. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so we, we are looking for a, a, a big day. You mentioned the fact that the aqueduct coverage will, will embrace what happens at the Mute Mile on, on Saturday, and that is uh, advertising dollar that is immeasurable, isn't it? So... I spoke to the stakeholders three, four years ago. Yes. I told them that I had a business plan. I told them that we had big things in store. And this is just a part of that delivery. Um, when you're growing a product like this, and um, I was at the Asian Racing Conference. And so there's Australia there, there's Japanese there, there's a Hong Kong, three big markets. And everybody was there just lapping up everything that they had to offer. And one of the things that they spoke about was global liquidity. How do you ex export your product and mop up what there is? So some of these places are lucky that it's horse country. In Australia, there's a ministry, right, or a minister of horse racing, right, on this portfolio. Specifically, yes. it says horse racing and tourism, right? So we had to look and said, okay, how can we learn from all of this and make it better? Yeah. Andy Serling spoke about at, at, the, at, the, at the draw, he spoke about how fantastic the Jamaican audience is at, at Aqueduct, how he would love to get them more and more at, um, at Saratoga. And we have them all here. Yeah. I mean, they just have a fraction of what we have here. So we said, you know what, we're going to make the ground floor free and we're going to get everybody in and they're going to have a fantastic time. Yeah, there was a couple of decades ago, Solomon, a move to develop a West Indies Thoroughbred Racing Association because you've just touched on something that I think is very important because when these overseas people, we saw Peter Yellow from Gulfstream Park coming yes. to the Caribbean a couple yes. of weeks ago, um, Andy Serling you just mentioned from New York and how much he's embracing the Caribbean product. Now today is the 57th anniversary of Barbados's independence and decades ago the Cox Coxper Gold Cup which um, chain sponsorship to become the Sandlane Barbados Gold Cup had this kind of feel about it. There were world famous people who converged on Barbados that first Saturday in, in March for the Gold Cup. Frankie de Tori, top jockeys right. that you, you read about and you see on television, they were right here in the Caribbean. Are, are we shortchanging ourselves in, in what a horse racing product can be for the Caribbean? Obviously, I'm seeing the Mute Mile breaking some ground here. But it just seems to me that this is an untapped industry. Absolutely. So years ago, we had a conversation with some guys from St. Lucia, and they wanted just that. And we said, yes, we're ready. We want to be a part of it. Um, we're ready to host it. Um, we weren't sure with, with COVID. Um, we stuck to our guns. So we're ready. Um, Barbados um, has had added lights. Um, we're potentially looking to add lights as well. And um, the guys from Trinidad, they want to come, but I'm not sure what, what's stopping them. You know? TNT's industry is struggling at the yeah. moment. Yeah. yeah. So they only have, they've only had 12 races, race meets for the year. It's been wrong. Um, they're having one this Saturday. So we're going to you know, be showing our race there. And hopefully this will be the catalyst for us to come together. So we can help them, and they don't have to run 100 meets for the year. So what can actually happen, and um, I'm letting out a little piece of my, my business plan, um, we're ready to help them. And they kind of reached out and then it didn't happen, but I'm waiting for it to happen. But it's so easy because they can structure their race meets, right? And then they'll bring the crop, the best crop of their horses or whoever they feel like they should ship. 
they ship these horses in for our version of um, Saratoga. So October, November, December, the racing is very rich. So you come, you send your horses for this period, you're gonna get um, a few stakes races. We just made another change to the calendar um, and the horsemen will be notified shortly. We're removing the Ian Levy from this year to next year. Oh. But it's on December 30 mm -hmm. to January 1. Okay. So we're moving it two days. So when we looked at the calendar, we said, you know what? Let's give them a good race to start here with, a grade one. Plus, it gives them two days to recover. So they're going to go a mile on Saturday. It gives them two more days to recover to go eight and a half furlongs. Because we pretty much want the whole field to come back. Um, hint, hint. It's on a Monday. And um, I'm working on some more plans for that. Yeah. Well, Monday is, for the most part, a non-competitive TV day because most U.S. tracks don't have racing on a Monday. It's a down day yes. for the big tracks. The, for the big tracks, yes. And I'll show you a video after with Kendrick Carmou said, Hey, I want to come to Jamaica, pool party, blah, blah, blah. So, <laughs> I don't know. All right, let's get back quickly to the Mute Mile here, um, Solomon, because we were talking off here just now, last year's inaugural staging of the Mute Mile, we are a furlong and a half from the finish. About seven or eight horses could have won the event. That's how exciting it was. Excessive force finishing fast on the inside on the rail with Beb Harvey to, to get the victory there. And we are anticipating the possibility, based on the competitive look of the field, that we could have a similar Mute Mile here where um, a furlong from home and um, many horses in with a shot. So usually when we run six furlongs, yes. you'll get a 22-44 pace. I think this mile race is going to be a 22-44, 1-9. I think they're going to end up in about 137. So is it going to be one of those horses staying on at the front or will it be one of those horses running on? And when you look on this stellar field, um, any one of these horses could, 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 could stay there. They're super fit at the moment. Yes. Yeah. Um, I keep making a joke with the, with the connections of Mahogany. Boy, you made us have to wear an extra race um, to qualify. And I'm like, who told you that the horse didn't want to run? Did the horse tell you he didn't want? Maybe this is a tonic that he needs. So when I look on this field, I mean, it can go any which way. Yeah, talk to me about rough entry. Um, having a stellar career in the U.S. and coming now in Jamaica. And you spoke about the different people coming in. Julian Leperu will be at the helm with this horse. I think it makes a beautiful story. Oh, yeah. So the, the, the better part of the story, this is the first time Rohan Crichton mm -hmm. was born and bred in Jamaica, <laughs> cut his teeth on the back stretch of Jamaica. This is the first time he's going, he has had a trainer's license in Jamaica. I'm going to saddle a horse. Oh, wow. And um, he was one of those that probably used to go to school in the morning with a little race paper in his back pocket. Um, so he's coming back and he has wanted to support this event. He has supported me a lot on this journey. He's given me a lot of advice. And he said, you know, I think you're going to make a lot of good things happen at Caymanas Park. And whenever the time comes, I'm going to support you. So he supported us. Um, it has an American, another American owner, but it has another Jamaican owner, Dennis Smith. And they've decided that they're going to support this, this card. Um, Rowan called Irad Ortiz first and says, Irad, yeah. I need you to come and ride this horse because he has won on it before. Yes. Okay. He says, Irad, I need you to come and ride this horse for me. And um, the cigar mile was Trump's. But it says, I'm very interested in it. So they're not just coming here to participate. They're coming in here to win. And there's been a lot of rumors on the back stretch because they have a different training style and over oh, here they're not running and it's a whole bunch of fun and and games and all the shenanigans with what is going on and who is working well and who doesn't look good and but again a different um, running style so when you look at that mahogany looked a winner and then here came, here came everybody else out of out of the blue yeah there there is duke the gray horse coming up on the outside yeah. to snap second duke is also in the race on Saturday. About six or seven of the horses who ran in the Mute Mile last year are back this year. Right. Uh, but you talk about rough entry. And this is a horse that is coming to Jamaica in the pink of form. Yes. He has two wins and four second place finishes yeah. in seven starts this year at Gulfstream Park in Florida. And uh, his most recent victory, I think, coming in September. September, so right this before horse, shipping. Apart from the fact that he is shipping and... Uh, you know, there may be an, an, an element of acclimatizing and uh, the difference in, in the racetrack conditions, but there is every indication that this horse is a high quality horse 
And I was a little startled when I checked the race book today to see his morning line odds at 10 to 1. But, well, I don't make morning line odds. And, <laughs> and, and the horses don't read race books. No, they don't. <laughs> so the horse doesn't know what the odds are. Julian Leperu will be coming to the track on Saturday morning. <laughs> I don't think he has any interest in reading the race book. Yeah. And he says, um, the agent said, um, boss, where can I get the videos of the horses that I'm riding? Yeah. So I said, well, you can find rough entry real easy. I said, no, 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 we watched that one already. Wow. So, so everybody's coming well prepared. That's rough entry in the yellow silks yeah. they're holding on for the victory. And that kind of looks like how we're going to, the finish is going to be for yeah. the Mutemal, about yeah. six horses across the yeah. Across the track. A lot of favorites. Yeah. Um, the morning line favorite, according to the Track and Boo's book, is Atomica at 3 to 1, Horse of the Year, um, five race winning streak at the moment, and uh, disappointed last year, didn't run that well, blew the turn, and finished ninth. Uh, Gary Sabrati told us this week that he is confident that Atomica will run a significantly better race than she ran last year. But think about it. Last year she had a very tough campaign. Yes. So she had her triple crown, and then she came back, and then she was super fit that he had to put her in a race. She blew them away going six furlongs. She got roughed up in the Gold Cup, but she doesn't She doesn't have that coming in. So he, he picked her races coming in, and she's coming in super, super, super fit. Yeah. And um, a lot of the real birds are telling me that Tamika is a totally different horse this year. Yeah. A lot of the real birds are telling me she's my destiny. Is a totally different racehorse this year, and how they're training and like what work was done on this <laughs> horse and that horse and all myriad of things that you hear on the back. Yeah, well, although she's my destiny is primarily a speed horse, she has already won twice over a mile, which is Saturday's uh, Rich Mute in a good trip. time. In good times. So I think maybe six or seven months ago, people were not considering she's my destiny as a top entry for the. Uh, Mute Mile, but in recent months, her performances, including her Gold Cup victory yeah, last right month, here. Running on. does suggest you're yeah, coming from behind here to color mahogany. A tough mahogany. Win. Yeah, albeit getting a lot of weight from mahogany. Right. Mahogany carried 126 pounds here and just didn't hold on. But um, these two, mahogany on the inside, she's my destiny on the outside, finishing 1-2 in the, in, the, in the Gold Cup, are expected to be in the frame in the Mute Mile on Saturday. Absolutely. And then what we saw with uh, Mahogany, when he ran last year, in, he stopped here. Yes. But right three weeks later in the Ian Levy, they were playing with his mane and he ran on for the victory. Yes. Yeah. Well, Salomon, we want to thank you so much for stopping by. I know how good the Mute Mile is. And for those of our viewers who has missed it, they don't want to miss this year. No. So we can watch it on Sportsmax, right? Yes. Very, very much so. Um, if you're not here, you can also watch it on Fox, etc. Yeah, and post time will be 4.45 local time. Sharp. 5.45 in the Eastern sharp. Caribbean, yeah. And we'll be on time. <laughs> yes. We'll be yeah. on time. Looking yeah. forward. No delays. Sharp sharp. Yeah, no delays. <laughs> yes. All right. Well, let's take a quick break and we'll be right back.